Tonight, Dunedin's long-awaited new international hotel off the drawing board at last. The Bluff Oyster maligned once again. And new look guide dogs for the blind. Good evening. There's a crisis looming in Southland schools, a critical shortage of teachers. Some permanent positions aren't being filled and there aren't enough relievers to go around. Peter Cruikshank looks at how bad the problem is. Southland schools have had difficulties before putting teachers in front of children. Now it's become desperate as all the relievers have been mopped up. Education Board Manager Morris Chittick says it might come to the stage of sending children home. We're almost at the critical stage now and um, that's uh, concerning us greatly um, and that's why we need these people to come forward urgently. Uh, we're finding we're having to advertise up to three times permanent positions without getting anybody uh, to apply for them. Uh, we've got schools in Invercargill in this category. We've got some in the country. In 10 years, Invercargill South's principal, Dave Dustin, hasn't been short of permanent teachers. The school's got 270 pupils and 13 teachers. It needs two more. One's been advertised twice and one's been advertised once and uh, there have been no applicants so far that I know of. Have you ever experienced this situation before? All the other positions that we've had advertised in the time that I've been at the school have always had applicants and usually there's been a choice. The Education Board is advertising for teachers and is prepared to advertise in Australia. But there has been a large number of teacher movements. Board manager says many have moved back to schools near their own homes, prompted by jitters over tomorrow's schools. Some country schools are now at a critical stage and could lose teachers if classes drop below nine children. There are rumours 18 country schools could close, freeing up teachers for the larger schools. I have heard that statement made, uh, not officially, uh, and there is no doubt uh, that if a lot of the sole charge schools, and there are quite a number of them in Southland, uh, were closed, that that would certainly free up the teacher supply situation overall. Uh, however, I'd have to say that this board uh, has no intentions of going down that road. The shot in the arm Dunedin's been waiting for may be just around the corner. The City Council is negotiating right now for an international hotel to be built at a cost of up to $27 million. It's thought the 150-room hotel will be managed by the world's largest hotel chain, Holiday Inn. Kim Haring reports. It's thought the new hotel will look a little like the old town hall. It's no secret that the City Council has for many years desperately wanted an international hotel built on this site. But the plans for it flagged while investors were sought but failed to come forward. Today the Council held further discussions about the funding of the hotel, which is not yet settled. But the cat was let out of the bag by an advertisement in this morning's Daily Times calling for tenderers to register to consult on the interior design of a 150-room hotel in Dunedin. There is another Holiday Inn hotel in New Zealand. It was built in Queenstown two years ago. Capturing this large international management chain for Dunedin would be considered something of a coup. One feature of the new hotel is thought that there'll be a tunnel underneath Moray Place connecting it to the conference centre. If the hotel does go ahead, it's thought construction will be kept local and it'll be finished by late 1990. Southlanders have leapt to the defence of the Bluff Oyster, following reports today linking it with stomach upsets. The Invercargill Health Development Unit is looking at a possible connection in the case of three people. But as Mark Price reports, no definite link has been established so far. The suggestion has been that the cause of some cases of vomiting and diarrhoea in Southland may have been due to a bacteria sometimes found in shellfish, this time in oysters. We have, have not been able to uh, positively identify the oysters as having caused this um, particular uh, outbreak of three people with uh, parahemolyticus. The Health Development Unit says one of three people that was notified about who became ill had eaten oysters within the previous 24 hours. We, we've had three notifications. We've only been able to contact one of them. Um, uh, we don't believe that it is significant at this stage and we, uh, because, of, co the, of course, the oyster season has now been open for about a fortnight and many, many thousands of people will have eaten raw oysters and enjoyed them uh, uh, with no ill effect. There's been quite a nasty gastric flu 
uh, and a very widespread one. In fact, half of my family are down with it. And uh, they haven't eaten oysters at all. And there must be a, a percentage of those people who have eaten oysters just recently uh, and uh, will be blaming those for that sort of thing, uh, which um, I, I feel is rather unfortunate. Very unfair on the oyster. Yeah, certainly. The oyster industry says health scares are not uncommon during the season. It's unclear what effect the scare will have on sales, but some Southland oyster eaters certainly weren't concerned. Well, I've got ten dozen raw ones here and uh, half a dozen cooked ones here. And have you had any problems so far this year? No. And I'm not likely to either. <laughs> Has uh, it affected sales at all? Not so far this morning. It seems to be like a form of advertising. It seems to be going better. High winds at sea have driven the Japanese squid boats working off the Otago coast to seek shelter. 17 boats spent the afternoon sheltering off Long Beach, just north of Dunedin. It's the second day they've taken shelter in the bay. Today, winds of up to 62 knots were recorded in the area, but the boats are expected to head out to sea soon to continue fishing. Most of Otago and Southland's farmers are having an excellent year, according to information released today by the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. While there's still a serious problem for the 10% of the region's farmers in the drought region, MAF's latest farm monitoring report shows there's been good growth and good prices elsewhere. Top of the heap are high country farmers enjoying prices for merino wool and sheep that MAF says have gone into orbit and there have been better prices for crossbed wool and lambs. It's the same situation in the case of dairy farming and cropping, and deer farmers too are getting high prices for velvet and venison. A good summer will mean more winter feed, use in better condition next spring with the prospect of good lambing. Seeing eye dogs are described by the Blind Foundation as the Rolls Royce of mobility. And as is usually the case with Rolls Royces, few people actually have them. But all that is soon to change. An Auckland guide dog specialist has been in Dunedin to talk about increasing the number of dogs. There's only one here at the moment. And introducing new breeds. Sally Pears reports. It takes a good year and a half of intensive training before dogs like Tosca can work for the blind. Paula Waby, who works at the Vasti as a secretary, has had her dog for a year, and in that time she's been able to tackle things she never could before. New Zealand's guide dog manager Ian Cox is determined many more blind people will be given the opportunity of having a dog like Tosca. Over the next two years, it's hoped 50 dogs will become available in the Otago Southland area, and many blind people are keenly awaiting their arrival. The members I've talked to who have got guide dogs always say they get there, they have no problems, if there's a wee problem arise, they soon overcome it. But when you haven't got a dog and you're by yourself, it can be a lonely world out there when everything's black. Do you think um, people feel more secure having a dog, almost like having another person there? They do, because if a car comes around a corner or something like that and they don't hear it, the dog will see it. And the dog actually steps in front of the person and won't let that person move until the obstacle's out of its way. Different breeds of dog will also be trained, including poodles, who don't shed hair and so are good for those with allergies. Airedales, boxers, Dalmatians, giant schnauzers and German shepherds can also be used. All these breeds have been used overseas for quite a while and are slow to be introduced here because of popular misconceptions about their behaviour. Once the dogs are trained and ready to work, it's up to the general public to let them get on with their job. That means not patting them when they're working, but making them welcome in any public place and on public transport. After all, dogs like Tosca are working as somebody's eyes. Invercargill ratepayers are seeing a return for their money as their new $6 million library takes shape. And as construction continues ahead of schedule, city councillors have been taking a look too. Bernard Buck with this report. With most of the structural work completed, the main job now is finishing off the building for handing over to the city in June, a month ahead of schedule. One hitch is the late delivery of slate from Italy. Meanwhile, city councillors have been on site looking at progress first hand. With much of the interior scaffolding removed, the total picture is becoming much clearer. Once the new library is completed, the present library will close temporarily while books and fittings are transferred. 
With two checkouts and a 50% increase in patronage expected, some staff increases are forecast. Final estimates for the project will be worked out once the cost of security and cleaning are finalised. Now a look at the weather on what's been a pretty mixed day around the province, but it looks like the northern part has had the higher temperatures. Halfman Bay was miserable with 12 degrees today. At 3 o'clock, Invercargill had 8 degrees and a high tomorrow of 13. Gore was cloudy with 12 Balclutha blustery and 9. Dunedin partly cloudy but 16 degrees and a high tomorrow of 15. Palmerston sunny and 19 degrees. Omru with 20 degrees the high. Renfrewly 15. Lumsden 10. Queenstown fine and 13. Wanaka partly cloudy 13. 16 in Alexandra and Tiana had rain and 9 degrees. We'll be back tomorrow night St Patrick's Day here on the South tonight. Good night.